And welcome everybody. It's Wednesday night. We're going to look at the hands assignment from the essentials. And we're going to welcome Lily Dale into the group. Hey, Lily. Um, and our first shot is uh, from a new photographer who just joined the group, uh, TZ, who is uh, uh, over in uh, Portugal and luckily got his picture in first. So after we critique it, he can go to bed. So thank you. <laughs> That, that'll be your key. You get them in first, TZ, and we got to them. So um, this is a this is a really fun shot. This is obviously a drummer, right? Is this a friend of yours, TZ, or a drummer that you know? Yes, he's a great old friend of mine. But and, uh, I'm a drummer, so I recognize this guy's a basher, right? What's a basher? Sorry. He, he plays loud. Y yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Bash, this is what bashers do to the sticks. Jazz players like me, we don't we don't do this to the sticks. <laughs> but when I bash, I do. I can go through a pair of sticks in a night for sure. I'm sure he goes through a pair of sticks in a night or two uh, for sure. Great shots of the hands. What a wonderful – this is a classic shot. Let me tell you what I like so much about it. Let me tell you what I, I think I would have done to spark it just a little bit. What I like about it is you've given it context – uh, by removing context, the black. He's obviously wearing some sort of black sweater with black sleeves, and so you've got all the light on here. The thing that I would have changed a little bit, and what I'd want you to think about next time, is because our light is so flat on the front of this, we, we're losing the shape of the knuckles and the hand because the light's wiping out all shadow or shadow side. Um, if we'd brought the light now, how is this lit? Is this uh, on camera flash or is this like a softbox right over the lens? Uh, it's a softbox right over the hands. Right. And I tried to feather it to to remove the reflection from the leather jacket he was using. Okay. Um, another thing you could do: see these these sticks? Um, they're they're kind of beat up, so they're they're more diffused now than brand new sticks have a have a you know a coating on them to make them shiny. Uh, but one yes. thing you could do, you could put a black card uh, right out of camera, right over here, and give this side of the knuckles something dark to reflect. It would be very subtle. The black card would be very subtle. The other thing you could do is actually take a soft box on this side of it and make this soft box be a third of a stop brighter than your top soft box. So this is F8 right here. Then this box over here would be F9. And then you shoot it at F9, which means the deepest shadow that you could have on the shot would only be a third of a stop away. With me? It'd be, yes. half, you know, it'd be F, F8 um, to give it some dimension. I think it needs a little bit more dimension, but it's a heck of a good shot. Great idea. Well executed. Thank you. Now, now how did, did hey, he, he probably loved this shot. Yes, I do. And I, I, I haven't done a shot about people. Uh, a portrait shot of someone uh, quite a while. I've been shooting products most of the time, mm -hmm. and having having portrait is his hands, his story, yep, his life, and it, it it was really amazing. And I really, I'm really thinking about um, getting some other shots like this. Well, what you, what you've done is you've, you're still doing a product shot. You mean yes, you're I still do. bringing your sensibilities of product still life into this portrait of hands. Yeah. Excellent. Good job. Well, we set the bar pretty high right on the right out the right out of the, the thing here. Patrick Bravo, that's an ex I really like that picture. S sorry guys. Good night, man. Well, I'll I'll be hanging around a bit because oh, I'm okay. working. No problem. All right, so Patrick, is Patrick on here tonight? Patrick's not. It's a small one. Patrick, when you do this next time, uh-oh, mute yourself if you got your your muter is off. So, um, yeah. Am I the only one who's not seeing the pictures? I, if the, the viewer's stuck at the top of the hands page for me. I can't see it either. Yeah, I'm stuck. I'm stuck too. It's not scrolling for me either. Okay, I'm looking at the um, I'm looking at the, the big picture here. This might be a flicker thing. 
All right. So now you're seeing, are you seeing the hand there now? No. The, the guy, no. is it scrolling? Uh, we're still, we still see the flicker. No. Not in the webinar screen. Yeah. I'm following along on Flickr, but the webinar page is not scrolling. It's not scrolling. No. Okay, we saw that move. Oh, okay. There it's going. Okay, there you go. There. That's weird. Thank you. Well, that's weird. It was my showing my screen was off. I didn't turn it off. I think the trolls have done it. <laughs> I hate the troll bastards, everyone. All right, so we have it's this shot. Uh, what's that? We have this shot by Patrick. Um, Patrick, it's a uh, you know it's 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 an okay shot, but it doesn't show me the hands. The ha there's a hand back here, but the hand isn't isn't the subject of the shot. Subject of the shot is this guy right here, and we really needed it to be the hands. So maybe a shot from this direction to really show this hand, which looks like he's got a look. I don't know. It looks like he's got a bandage or something on here, which would have been very cool to see. And then this hand is out of the picture. So we really need to see the hands, but this is actually a shot of the anvil here um, and, the, and the hammer. That's the subject right here. We really want the subject to be the hands. Um, so you miss that, but uh, as a shot, it's, it's not too bad. It's, um, you're using your depth of field and you've got a little bit of blur here to give us some motion. That's not bad. What happens on this shot though, We've, we've maintained um, this background, which is nice and, and out of focus, and it gets over here and it stays light. What I'd want to do is to vignette this just over on this side just a little bit to keep force our eyes back into the shot. And also right here on top of the hand, let's not lose that hand. Uh, the shot, the, the light's too pretty everywhere else to lose that hand. So Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever it is that you do to process this. Uh, process another raw file a little bit darker, drop it underneath this shot, and then and then uh, if in Photoshop and then using a mask, bring that part of the hand back just a little bit. Be very, very careful with it. Uh, and if folks, if you don't know, on Photoshop, if I mentioned something, you think, I don't know how to do that, pop in, let me know, and I'll do a tutorial on it. So, all right. Here we go. This is hands right here. This is Ivan Sorensen. Um, very interesting use of color, or actually monochrome here, Ivan. Uh, that's pretty much the way it uh, it looked, uh, Don. Uh, yeah. It was shot underneath a white a white fly. Yeah, and you've and it looks uh, like the hands and the clay are all the same same color. So you got this real all the same colors. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only the only thing that I was looking at was the you see that white uh, uh, or lighter uh, stretch on the on the finger there on the pot there uh, that that really caught my eye right there because you could see that while he was uh, while he was shaping the pot. Interesting. Interesting. You know you know I always like the details and I I just love this right here where the clay is caught between the fingers. Yeah, yeah. That's just really cool. Uh, really good use of hands, and and um, I mean this is this is real. This guy is not faking it. He's obviously throwing a pot. Is it spinning, or did he freeze it for you? No, he's spinning. He's spinning. Okay, so you're yep. using. Um, you're, you're, it's an old. It was an old fashioned uh, wheel, uh, or maybe about eight inches in diameter. Uh huh. But it had this uh, huge stone flywheel uh, underneath that he was uh, kicking to to make it spin. Yep. This was at a, uh, uh, a, uh, a War of 1812 reenactment. Yep. Yep. That's very nicely done. As I sit back from it, uh, Ivan, the only thing I think I'd like to see is a little bit more like highlights. See these, this highlight right here? Yeah. Running down. Do a little bit of highlight brushing on there and see if you can just bring oh, that yeah? up just a little bit. The pot looks great, okay. but even there, right here, might take a little bit of highlight brush in here and down here right, just right. to give it a little bit more pop. Um, and, I, I, and, you know, my famous words, I, I don't need to see it. I need to feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Very cool. Thank you. 
Good shot. Thank you very much. GKMB. Natural light. GKMB. Or G, is GKMB on here tonight? No, not on here tonight. Okay, GKMB. This is this is natural light, um, uh, but it's not good light. It's it's kind of it's kind of like it's standing in the sunlight, and it's not enough to do this. One of the things that that we have to do as photographers is take a better photograph than if we just you walked outside and took it. And I'm not saying that's what you did. I'm saying that anyone could do this. They could just stand outside with this and hold a camera up and take the shot. We need to do more with it. Whether you need to bring in lights, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying, oh, this needs to be shot with ProPhoto. We can still use daylight, but we've got to watch our backgrounds because our background here doesn't help your shot. It doesn't help it at all. I think this shot would end up the real specular light on the knife kind of makes the knife look um, funky. I think this, this shot would have been great with a diffuser. That's the middle part like of a five in one diffuser, that diffuser panel, uh, the, the reflectors, the diffuser panel inside, put that up over the sun and bring it down as close as you can get it to this, these hands and, and knife. In other words, that diffuser blocking the sun would be right about here. So it looks like about maybe eight or nine inches above this. You would then have a much prettier light. You wouldn't have the hard shadows under here that are that are um, that are not helping your shot. And of course, the, then the the boat and the hand, everything looks really flat because that sunlight's just flattening it out. We want to give it dimension with soft light and soft shadow. Uh, second shot, yeah, pretty much the same. Um, so it's a good attempt, absolutely a good attempt, but we have to go farther than just taking it outside and shooting it. And if that's not what you did, understand it's what it looks like you did. So um, let's let's uh, let's let's work a little bit more to get uh, to get it. Christine um, got the hands in here. Um, Looks like window light. Chris is not with us. Looks like window or soft. What does it say down here? Huh. Oh, it looks like he used the light. So if he used light, it's probably a soft box. Or is that an umbrella? That might be an umbrella. See how it's getting fatter here and narrower down here? That might be an umbrella. Not the best choice for still life. Folks, um, trust me on that. Not the best choice for still lifes because we see the umbrella shape instead of the uh, softbox. Well, that's not bad. That looks like a softbox right there. All right. So maybe it was just the handle that was doing it. Uh, as far as the hands, they um, we've cut the hands off so much. We're not getting. We're only getting fingers. I'd love to see this backed up or or shifted more to the right to get the hands in the shot and. We can't, uh, this hand, hand holding this um, thing is great. That's perfect. It's exactly how you hold this thing. This hand coming in is not bad. It's not bad at all. Very nice with the fingers. But see, we've cut it right at the knuckles, and, and that's, that's a problem. Because once we cut these things so much off, it's not a shot of the hands anymore. It's a shot of the soldering iron. I mean, let's look and see the difference here between a shot of the hands a shot of the soldering iron so we have to be very very careful because remember we're working for art directors in this case it's me so you know i'm not going to fire you uh, and i'm not going to not pay you and i'm not going to yell at you um why do you have your first art director yell at you that's always a special experience something you will remember forever uh, i'm not going to do that but i am I, I am the guy here giving you these assignments so that you follow them here's hands Dwayne. Dwayne, it says you're here, but you're not here, Dwayne. Go down to questions to see if Dwayne is down there saying, there's something wrong. Uh, nope, don't see that. And there we go. Uh, Dwayne, beautiful shot. Well done. The hands are great. Uh, and, and look how pretty, Dwayne, you have these hands. This is exactly what this crocheter does with her hands. You've got them in here so nice, greatly, uh, really beautifully sharp, 
The face is out of focus back there, but it's in focus enough that we know she's she's concentrating. We know she's a craftsman. I like this shot a lot. My only question is it seems to be some yellow tint right on the edge of her face here, right on the edge of the hands here. That yellow um, sort of bothers me. and Because this hand looks great. Color on her hand looks here. This hand looks a little bit, I mean, it's a different color than this hand. And Dwayne, we can't have that. We're going to have to make this hand the same color as this. So you're going to have to get in there Photoshop, create a mask, and bring... Hello? Is that mixed lighting? It might be. I mean, this might be window light over here and tungsten over here. Because I don't see the yellow on this side of her face. You see what I'm saying, Ivan? Do you see? I mean, do you all see yeah, it? It's all, there on the, it's all there on the one side, yeah. Yeah. Down so her neck, that, too. Yeah, that's the mixed lighting. So how do you fix mixed lighting? Well, you process your you process your raw file twice. Once for tungsten, once for daylight. Bring them into Photoshop and just simply reveal this one over here with a, a mask. So you put the one with the, uh, where you've processed the tungsten light to daylight, uh, make sure they match, match, and then you just basically paint away this side of her and reveal the tungsten light below it. It's very simple to do and way simpler than sitting here trying to figure out, um, you know, RGB numbers and that and masking and all that kind of stuff. Just make them both match in Lightroom or in, uh, in camera raw and put one on top of the other one and they just paint that other one through. So we paint the one that's processed for this skin tone over here. Just paint it with your little brush. Just do something like this. Yeah, it looks really great. The white isn't going to change back here because the color isn't affecting it. And then right along this cheek right here, just kind of blend it in right there with a, you know, brush at 10, brush at 20, brush at 30, brush at 50, brush at 60, and you'll have it. It'll be just fine. Uh, nice shot, uh, Dwayne. Oh, He's there now. Dwayne, are you there? It says you are, but I can't hear you. Oh, well. Dwayne, if you let, let us know if you, the microphone pops up. We, we'll talk about your shot. All right. And now to the next shot. Oh, this is in. Oh, Melissa. Yes, I'm here now. Who's this, Dwayne? Who, who was that? Was that Dwayne? Uh, Dwayne? No, Dwayne, you're cutting out real. Oh, you're gone. You cut out real bad. Now you're offline. If you can hear me, it shows, it shows me having you offline. Try one more time here. You there, Dwayne? Nope, I can't hear you. Nothing's coming. Hello, Don. I'm here. It's Dwayne. Oh, hey. There you are. Where are you, Dwayne? There must be a delay in the sound. Uh, it's, it's what it sounds like. I'm in the Philippines. Yeah, that's what we're probably getting quite a delay. So but tell I can us, hear you just fine. Tell us about your shot here. <clears throat> Well, my first idea for the shot was to go to a pottery shop nearby and uh, take pictures of hands making pottery. But I went over there, and it was close for two weeks on vacation. And so I came back, and my wife was doing some knitting, and I said, oh, well, that could work. I can take a picture of her hands. So uh, I sat her down, and uh, uh, there, there was an issue of... The time that I could get her to do it, I used a, a strobe and a reflector, but there was also afternoon sunlight coming in, and so there was a mix of lights ah. in this picture that I didn't intend. I, I tried to fix it, but I don't think I did a wonderful job because I, I heard as I just got in that you were seeing it. Yeah, I'm seeing a warmth on this side. I'm not over here. Now, did you hear how I said to correct it? Uh, not exactly, but uh, I'll pick it up when I watch the recording. Yeah, let me. I'll just go through it one more time, real quick. Process, okay. 
process the raw file a second time at a lower or I'm sorry at a higher Kelvin so that you get this hand to match this hand then then open it okay. in Photoshop and put it below this one so you have the, the the regular lit one on this side and put the other one in the layer below put a mask on it and with a black uh, okay. brush at about 30 percent just start painting out this and start revealing the other hand on this side to match this one okay got it all right excellent and let's get down to melissa so is this like a powder that he's clapping hands with it was sawdust sawdust okay now how did you light this there's uh there's sunlight really strong from the left and um i've got an old uh, vivitar flash um and i i flashed it from the front it the flash only sinks up to one two hundred fiftieth it won't sink any faster right so the blur was intentional, but um, flash from the front and sunlight from the side. Okay. Get it back into Lightroom and darken this so we can see the blur. Because what's happening on my screen is I can hardly see the fingers in here. Now, do you use Lightroom or Photoshop? I use both. Do you? Yeah, get it in there and get us. Let's let's like I said uh, before. Maybe you do a second post process with this hand down, and then blend them together so we can really see these fingers blurring. I can see the little dark, dark little lines going up, but we got to see it a little bit more. Now, if you were if you were making this shot as a square, you know, you could actually. Um, uh, which, which camera are you shooting? I've got a Nikon D5100. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's a crop sensor. I wouldn't want to do that with a crop sensor. I was going to say, um, with my with a 5D Mark II, sometimes uh, I'll go ahead and shoot at a 400th or a 500th of a second and get the black line at the, across the bottom. But if I know where the black line is going to be there, I can take a step back and I still have enough pixels on a 5D or a, I'm shooting a 6D now, I have enough pixels to crop it. So I just say, oh, screw it. I'll go ahead and get the black across the bottom, but I'll still get the, the rest of the shot caught. So um, you can do that. 5100 well. will crop. What's that? 5100 will crop. That's 16 megapixels. I, I imagine it would, yeah. I imagine it would. So you just take a step back and make sure that the black doesn't go into the area that you need. Um, we we um we sometimes like on on the on forums we don't think it through. People go, oh yeah, but you get that black line in there. Well, I don't care. I'll crop it out. I have a crop tool on Photoshop. I'll crop it out. I can you know you get past the five hundredth on a five D Mark II or a six D. You get past the five hundredth, and the black line starts like going right up through half the shot. It's you know it's kind of annoying at that point. But again, if if half the shot will get <laughs> what you're shooting. <laughs> yeah. and, and the chips are down it might be go i'll oh, screw it I'll, I'll crop this little 12 megapixel uh, or 8 megapixel window out of the top left of this this uh image if that's what i need to get for um for that sync speed so uh real good idea now these these things are swirling was there like a fan blowing or something no he's just really he was covered in sawdust and just the concussion of clapping did that that's i was i was doing i was doing just what you said about the the black line i was doing that today with trying to shoot cosmetics and i thought maybe no one will know the black line was there and i was at one five hundredth if i just crop it out you're absolutely right no one will know and that's and it's totally fine to do it absolutely totally fine you know i used to I, you know i built a career on a camera that that synced at 1 80th of a second so 
I mean, that's all our film cameras uh, did up to five. The uh, Nikon F3 had 125th of a second sync speed, and we were like in shock. Uh, and most of us uh, bought Nikon FMs because it had a 250th of a sync, sync speed because it had a, a, a horizontal or a vertical shutter. Uh, and that was it. That's all we had was 125th of a second. Um, and, you know, yeah, 5100 is 16 megapixel. You should easily be able to crop that. Yeah. Especially for the web. You know, Melissa, if you're doing a job for for the web or for something like that, wouldn't I mean you you could crop it down to six megapixels and it'd still be ten times bigger than you needed. All right, Suki. Suki is Suki on here tonight. Suki's not on here. Okay, Suki. Um, pretty shot out here. You know, it's out in the shade. Back deck, late afternoon sun, using the house as a reflector. That's really good. But we have to make it even more striking. This is a good shot. And, and the challenge today in photography is that good shots are just that. They're just good shots. Have to make it stronger. Question is, how could you have made this picture stronger? Um, what kind of angle could you have done? I hope you did a lot of them. Uh, a lot of shots. That's one of the things that 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 we're going to ask for in the month of July is we're going to ask for people's uh, contact sheets and I do screen grabs off your off your Lightroom so we can see all the different ways of variations and things. Um, this is not a bad shot. It's not a great shot though, Suki. And I really want you to push it harder, push it farther. Um, than than just good. It, it definitely satisfies the assignment, but I need I need you to do more than that. All right, we have Thad G. All right, Thad. And here we got a hand shot. There's no doubt. This is the hands that are you know, and and I like how you you you've made it be a hand shot because you're hiding the crochet thing with the hand. Instead of revealing it, you're actually hiding it with the hand. So there's no doubt about um, this. Now, how did you like this, Thad? Um, let's say softbox to the right, umbrella to the left. There's an umbrella on the left side? Yes. What's it doing? Oh, right here. Because I'm not seeing the rub I'm not seeing the umbrella down here at all. Um, is that yeah. is it the umbrella blocking being blocked by her face? No, um, if you see the knitting needle going through the middle of the screen, that's about the angle the uh, umbrella was going at. And the softbox was up, up to the right. Um, the softbox yeah, right is up there. here. Yep. Yeah, because it's giving me all this over here. But that umbrella, um, the only reflection I'm seeing along here is right there. So I'm not even – I'm see, I'm not seeing any umbrella down here. So – um, and we need to up the power on it next time. Uh, the umbrella is there, but I'm not, because right in here, I'd want to see this side here. I'd want to see it kind of highlight right in here. I can see this from the soft box, but I'm not seeing it in here. I really need to see it. I would love to see that umbrella back there. Give me a line down the top of this, of this, um, hand here and to open this up back here because this part is alive and exciting, and this part back here just kind of kind of dies, you know? It's just all kind of gray tones. And I love the modeling and the texture and the light and how the light hits the veins of the hand coming down here. But the back hand is almost like it's almost like it's left out. Um, so yeah, all right. Good shot. Uh, Tracy. Miss the vertical requirement, yes. Um, all right, Tracy, this is, you know, this is kind of like a wedding shot. Are, is Tracy on here? Uh, I don't know. This is kind of like a wedding shot, but it doesn't rock. Um, did I just say that, Brett? Did I just say it doesn't rock? I'm like, wow, man, I, I'm going to be a superstar yet. Um, and, and it's on a recording, too. It's Yes, we'll have to edit that out. Um, 
<laughs> it's it's just kind of a shot of a hand holding rings and we have got to get beyond a hand holding rings because this can be done by anyone and if at at this point through the summer we're going to kick butt and take names because i don't want you doing stuff that can just be done by anyone now how could we pop this this shot up well here's a couple of ideas could uh, use a small snoot on a soft box and like just kind of hit the top of these things i'm not uh, not a soft box on a speed light uh, real low power hit the top of the rings and throw some shadows on the hands here could use some uh, aluminum foil around a flash head a strobe head and put a little line of light on the rings uh, might flag off this hand over here this is a big bright chunk of meat over here it doesn't make any sense we don't know what it is this is a hand but we don't know we, we kind of know it's someone else's hand but it's this big chunk of meat let's flag that off let's flag off this thumb over here and have a little bit more light in the middle um, we've got to do something other than just putting the rings in the palm um, we're, we are now going to get brutal on these these things because I want to push you uh, beyond where you are. Lola, Lily. Bada boom, Lily. What's this? You're kind of, you're a crazy girl. <laughs> it was me playing with Photoshop. You think? <laughs> That's very well done, Lily. Thanks. It took me forever. Oh, and 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 the other thing, of course, is that boy. There's going to be a huge call for this in Peoria, Illinois. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> no, but there's a good call for it up in the Chicago area. Um, well, let's hope. Yeah, uh, let's talk about the light. The light's gorgeous on the hands. Just absolutely gorgeous on the hands. Um, but then, of course, androids do have good hands. Right. So. Uh, the, the light on the watch is great. We didn't lose it. And your slate is terrific. This little hot spot over here, the, sh the shadows under the hands. Okay, so now you take us through. Obviously, you Photoshop this in. Right. Um, now, did you, is this a, this is actually a thing you have that you photographed and then put the skin on? Well, it's this is a composite of two photos. The first picture is just the hands and him holding the battery. Right. And then the second photo is I had a remote laying around a TV remote that that's the what you're seeing there is the back of it, which is black. Right. And then um, so I just photographed that. And as I'm trying to figure out how to bevel the edge on the compartment, the battery compartment, my 16 year old walks by and says, you should put some skin on the cover. And I thought, gee, I hadn't thought about that, <laughs> but okay. So I just took it off the hand yeah. and just overlaid it and played with it till it looked decent. Well, it 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 works very well, Lily. Um, more like this, obviously a soft box from like right over here. It's actually a um, um, my do-it-yourself um, beauty dish. Okay. That's in very, very close. Okay. Now, why would you shoot this with a beauty dish? Uh, why did I shoot it with a beauty dish? I wanted kind of that punchy light. Okay. And not, not, a, not, not yeah. a light from the softbox. So I thought I'd give it a try, and I really liked how it looked. Now, this is, a, this is a beauty dish that is a beauty. You don't have a sock across the front of it, right? No, yeah, it's yeah. just a homemade beauty dish. Yeah, so it is. It's quite punchy in here. I, I it it looks almost to me like a medium soft box with a grid. Um, oh. and, and you're in so close that we are getting a nice squarish highlight on the batteries instead of a roundish highlight. Um, uh -huh. You keep back if you back up too much, you get this sort of. It'll be round in here. It won't. The battery won't see the whole thing. So that's really helping. Okay. And that really punchy light on the top of the hand, uh, creating these deep, deep shadows. That's excellent. Excellent. Great job, Lily. Thanks. I'm, I'm trying to work my schedule to uh, meet but, you guys over in New Mexico. Cool. But hey, I was going to say, um, I posted that shot and I realized I hadn't done it in vertical, so I added this one. 
Well, you know what, Lily? Uh, I should beat you up for not doing it. Um, you should. Uh, you should. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It's so good. I'm going to let it pass. Peter. Peter. All right. I want to see her get beaten. Peter. All right. Well, I, well, we'll wait till we're in New Mexico and we'll get video. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, everybody's invited, right? Anybody in P52 wants to show up? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You you gave me an idea, and so did my friend Jerry this morning. He said, "Why don't you just like do do a couple meetups with folks?" And you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's not a workshop; it's a meetup. We're gonna go, you know, everybody meet up in, uh, uh, you know, Denver and do a really cool, uh, you know, walk around uh, or drive through the the uh, the Rockies for two days. Hey, I have I'd an be, idea. I'd be. I have an idea. Let's all meet in Toronto. No, Toronto's that's like, too far. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, you bunch of wusses! Well, we could we could go over and visit the uh, TZ in in Portugal. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I'd go in a heartbeat. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> we'd have a whole bunch You'll of people. You love it here. <laughs> uh, I got a uh, I got a note from uh, uh, or a fa Facebook post from uh, 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 Philippe. He said it's uh, 16 Celsius, just rained, and the new mown the new mown grass just smelling great. He said, "Oh, I love it here." <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I, I I can challenge you all for a surfing day. Oh yeah, well you know I got to tell I'd you, I'd love to see you going over a, a surfboard. Yeah, I'm 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 not as good as Ivan on the surfboard. He'd have to he'd have to go first and set the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Damien Powell, beautiful shot, Damien. Uh, again, though, I think we don't have enough hands to make it a shot of the hands because my eye goes right to here, and it becomes a shot of this beautiful spinning wheel. Um, the hands are in it, and they're an integral part to this photograph. But if I showed this to 50 people, I'd probably get 45 shot, 45 people telling me it's a picture of the spinning wheel. It's in focus. The hand isn't. It's lit beautifully. The hand's kind of just a big chunk of meat up front here. Um, so uh, beautiful, beautifully lit photograph, Damien. Absolutely awesomely lit photograph. We we need more hands. Remember, the, the, the story's title was The Magic of Hands. And F11. Wow. Wow. That's uh, some interesting Photoshop. And... Uh, and uh, look at this great background. That's really cool. Beautiful light F11. Are you on here tonight, F11? I don't know what F11's real name is. No, it looks like we've seen. It looks like we've talked to everybody. So F11 is not on here. Uh, I think F11's over somewhere in Spain or something like that as well. So F11, I'm giving you um, on the on the recording here. I'm giving you the same information. We will probably. Uh, well, we, we will start in July doing uh, one show a month for all you guys at a better time, a time that makes sense for you. So, um, uh, and that'll, that'll be great because there's probably only, I think, five people over there. So we'll, you know, one show a month will give us lots of time to talk. So uh, beautiful shot, F11. Uh, wonderfully done. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's happening right here. And I, that... Uh, how many other people are looking at this? My eye was my eye just gets. Yep, it's a little confused. It's a little confusing in the middle. Yeah, my eye gets confused by this thing right here. I I get all this, I got it. I don't know what that is right there. There's it seems like there's something in the hand blocking this finger over here because my brain says this finger needs to keep coming down. So maybe maybe he's got it holding a rock or something, a stone. Um, it looks like this hand, in fact, it does look like this hand's holding something, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like, uh, the Arkenstone. I like the way the, the light is coming from that top right hand corner and pulling it down to the hand. Yes. And then, and then look at this, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Just That's right cool. here. And it catches right here. This, this is where the magic happens in photography, folks. Over here, this is great. This is where the magic happens in the details. What is the light look in the details? F11, excellent shot. Rocking shot. Very good. All right. 
Well, that's fun. I'm I love I love being back on the live the live shows on the Essentials Group. It's it's just it's a blast for it's me. More fun. It most definitely is, and I'm kicking myself that we stopped doing it. Um, so anyway, just uh, just love love what you guys are all doing and working so hard, and and the fact that look at our look we've got uh, we've got uh, Melissa on here. Melissa, you're new, right? Right. Yep. And TZ is TZ is new. And, uh, you know, we got some new people. I love that. Are you having fun, Melissa? Yeah, it's it's kicking my ass. Good. It's really, really. I really try. I try hard. I really try hard. Yes. And sometimes we don't, the we don't use three work. letter words here. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, we restrict them to four-letter words. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad. Um, and, you know, th that brings up an interesting thing that, that I talk about, and I, uh, I'll i just close out with this unless there's any questions. And uh, TZ, we kept TZ awake, so at least we were not boring enough for uh, TZ to go to sleep. It's now 3 o'clock in the morning where he, he is. Um, uh, are, yeah, I'm still are, shooting. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Is there a Starbucks there where you, in, your, in your town? No, no. We really like real coffee, not ah, Starbucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, coffee is a new indulgence for me. Don, I, I need your help. You need my help? Yeah. What was that? Remember that? Remember that boudoir posting you made on Facebook? Oh, boy! My kitchen hell for that. Hang. Well, I'm not giving you hell. Yeah. Do you remember the? Um, the uh, shots of the couple with the van on the beach. Uh, the surfing shots. Young couple. Who did that? Van on the beach. And where? Oh, that's uh, you're talking about the endless summer. Yeah, yeah. Matt Barnes. Matt. Matt Barnes, M A T T B A R N E S. Matt Barnes, he's up in Toronto. He's a fantastic young shooter. That is, yeah, those are cool shots. I'm actually using them for some inspiration here. Good. Uh, check out when you go to his website. Check out the one he did with the jazz players. All the jazz players on the bus. Oh yeah! Wow, just really, really amazing. And that's part of what I was going to say here. We live in a world right now where making really good photographs is easy. I mean, bottom line, it is. You can go on 500 pics or Flickr and you can go through and you can get knocked out by um, by photographers who've owned a camera for a year and a half and uh, they're dentists or IT guys or moms or uh, lawyers or whatever. And they've taken some workshops and they can take a softbox and make a killer shot. What it's done... What it's done is raise the bar. The bar is now so far up, we can't do that anymore. We can't just take a photograph. We have got to, to push it. And it has nothing to do with lighting gear. It has nothing to do with whether you have pro photos or speed lights or you use natural light or tungsten. It doesn't matter. The picture has to be you have to push the limits with it. And, and Ivan, you're absolutely right to bring up Matt Barnes because Matt Barnes shoots what I would say would be sort of everyday average pro, uh, 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 subjects. Um, the one you're talking about, the endless summer. Good looking girl, good looking guy, old beat up van and an amazing photo shoot, right? Oh, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I love that whole series. Uh, uh, some of it's a little bit raunchy, but <laughs> uh, if you go if you go through his blog, uh, it is definitely he's got some shot stuff that is not safe for work, uh, and I mean that in all seriousness. He's got some really not safe for work stuff. For work, okay, so um, fantastic shooter, and and really has. How the heck did he light some of this stuff? It looks like just one light. 
Um, Matt uses uh, Octoboxes and Grids for an awful lot of his stuff. Go back and find the girls in the boxing ring. You'll be knocked out. I mean, not only are the girls absolutely stunning, but the way he shoots them is... I mean, he's got the smoke machine That's... going, and it's pretty much pretty much octoboxes and, and grids. So two octoboxes, same size, one for uh, ambient and one for modeling within the ambient. And that's what that's what uh, it's like. Chris Chrisman's work is the same way. He brings that up, that ambient up with one one light and then uses the second light to shape within the ambient that he created. So, okay. so um, you know, yeah, take a look at that and see how, how that's done as well. So what you're basically saying is he shoots inside the ambient. Yes. Yeah. And if the ambient isn't what he needs, he boosts the ambient. He'll bring mm -hmm. the ambient all the way up so that he can shoot with – exactly, shoot within the ambient. So he'll bring the whole room up to F8 so that he can shoot at F11. Right, 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 right. Then nothing in the room – uh, there's no um, there's no shadows or anything there that are too dark because he's brought the ambient up to a stop under what he's shooting. Yeah. So, yeah, check it out. I think you'll like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got a I've got an idea, and I think I've got a uh, I, I I've got a concept, and uh, the the lighting is actually the inspiration for this. Uh, I, I I don't have the materials to recreate uh, that kind of lighting. But I can. Um, you can if you. I'm, I'm going to put. I'm going to put my own spin on it anyway. Shower curtains, and then use for your light source behind the shower curtain. Use small umbrellas so that you can shape the light on the shower curtain. Okay. Yeah. That way, you take. Let's say you take the shower curtain and you put it like like in the van. Okay. Out of sight. So it's doing that you take that small umbrella like the 24 inch umbrella and instead of moving it back like we normally do to light the entire um scrim we bring it in tight so we're lighting you know it's about eight inches away from the scrim the scrim will still light up but okay. it'll have a yeah. tremendous fall off you'll have a very hot spot and then it falls off so you can control where you put that hot spot so you're basically basically putting a sock on an umbrella yeah, but you're moving it out. So, it out. so it's so uh, like a sock on an umbrella. You, the sock is lit, and then it's not right. You got a round mm -hmm. light. This way, you have a round light with a very soft fall off. The fall off might mm -hmm. be as wide as two feet. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you can sculpt with it. It's it's really really cool lighting. I just uh, I I'm enthralled with it. Yeah. Oh, he's he's very good. He's a young guy, and uh, he's just he's really really good, and he's kicking butt. You can uh, go through his yeah. uh, and see his blog, and you'll see all the work that he's doing. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a real close look at that. Some of the is now he's at the point where some of the people are um um hiring him to do his work. Oh, really? Yeah. Ivan, do well, you maybe have I a, won't be too far behind him. Ah. Do you have headphones? Me? Nope. Yeah, you're you're feeding back really bad. I am? Yeah. Um are you on a Mac or PC? PC. Laptop. Okay. Check your audio settings for your microphone and you should have for next time, check it. You should have a little checkbox for feedback. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now and it, uh, echo is cancellation is on. It's on. No. Hold on. No. How's that? Are you there? I'm here. Oh, it was TZ. Oh. Nope, it's still there. Is it? It is. Hello, hello. Oh, no. Hello, hello. It's yeah. tiny now. It's not bad at all now. I... Oh, okay. How about much now? Better. Right. Yeah, much better. Much better. Yeah, I'm going to unmute you. Cool. I think it was. Hello? I'm also an audio technician. <laughs> yeah, it's TZ. Um, all right. So uh, for next time, you got your assignment out there. What I want everybody to do who's listening to the show 
uh, on rerun, I want you to think about the shots and just say, okay, I need to step up my game and push myself farther because not this assignment that's up there, but the one that I put up Sunday, we are going to um, look at uh, contact sheets. We're going to do some screen grabs of your Lightroom contacts or your uh, your um, camera raw contacts so we can see how you got to the shot you got to. So um, that'll be kind of fun. So uh, if that's it, I will, uh, I will let everybody uh, go and have a great evening. And I appreciate it so much. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Don. Have a great Bye, night. Good night, Bye. all. Bye, guys.